Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. church we need your power in us we seek your kingdom first we hunger and we thirst refuse to waste our lives for you our joy and prize to see the captive hearts release the hurt the sick the poor
Well, we want to welcome you here to our, our very first service of 2021. And today we're going to be doing it a little bit differently. And so Pastor Julie's going to explain a bit. So instead of having one long sermon at the end of the service, we're going to, throughout the service, have different reflections. And just sort of look at the past year and the year to come and how God has been at work and how God will continue to be at work. And then today we're also going to celebrate communion since it's the first Sunday of the month. So we want you to be ready for that. Go and get whatever supplies you need so that you can be ready to celebrate communion with us. Then following the service today, we're going to have a time of fellowship and uh, it'll be on Zoom again. We tried this last week and it was good. And so we're going to do it again this week and we're going to commit throughout the year to have fellowship Sundays on uh, communion Sundays. And so as long as that means um, that it needs to be done by Zoom, it'll be done by Zoom. And if there becomes an opportunity where we can gather again in person, we will uh, have communion uh, Sunday gatherings. And so today we really invite you to join us on Zoom for a time of fellowship after the service. And then our music today is going to be a look back on the past year and just how um, God has used different people to lead us in worship in this, new, uh, in this new way over the course of the last several months. So why don't you stand um, and worship together? I want to open our service with a reading from Psalm 96. And I think it's, it's appropriate for this, this new year that we enter into. It says this, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all people. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just pray that that's exactly what happens this day. That, Lord, that we would be able to sing a new song to you. That we'd be able to sing of your goodness of the deeds that you have done and are going to do for people, not just here, but around the world. And God, it's in Jesus' name that we pray these things. Amen. 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 Join us as we sing Light and Lamb.
In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, what fears are still, where striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground, his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, and up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, sin's curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, and this is the power of Christ in me from life's first cry till final breath jesus commands my destiny no power of hell no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hands till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand no power of hell no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hands till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Well, thank you for leading us in those songs. As we mentioned, we're going to be um, just sort of taking some time throughout this service where we look at, at a, a few different verses and just reflect on them uh, before entering back into a few more um, songs. But I want to look at Isaiah chapter 43. And remember that Isaiah is written approximately 750 years before Jesus comes and um, and he, he's talking about, you know, what is to come, the hope that we have as believers in the one true living God. And and in the 43rd verse, the interesting thing, uh, sorry, 43rd chapter, the interesting thing is that the first part, basically the first half of that chapter is just where Isaiah is, is talking and he's admitting that things are not going well. They're not going as planned, that uh, that the people are in deep waters, that there's uh, imagery of fire and carnage and everything that can go wrong is going wrong. But then we get to the 18th verse, right? And it says this, um, it says, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. You do not perceive it. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And, and I just, you know, 2020 has been a challenging year. 
And I think that the words uh, of the Bible speak to us saying, forget the former things. 2020 is done. Look at what's happening in the future. Look at what God is going to be doing in our midst. In the middle of all this difficulty, God is going to do amazing things. And I think that's really something for us to hold on to as we as we walk into the new year. Don't let what's happened you know, um, in, in the year prior get in the way of the good things that God has started and will complete in this year. And so that's that's the first verse I want to reflect on. And I want you to turn in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. And I'm sure this is one that is familiar to you. Probably many of you have it memorized. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths or he will make your paths straight, depending on what version you uh, learned it in. This verse has been one of my favorite verses um, ever since I was young in my faith and, you know, was just a, a teenager really is when I memorized that verse and it really became very real to me. But it's one I've come back to again and again and again in my Christian walk. It's such an essential one for us to remember because it's about how important it is that we trust in God. And we talk about that as Christians. We talk a good talk about trusting in God. And yet it's really one of the most difficult things to do because our nature, our human nature wants us to trust in ourselves. Our society and the world around us teaches us to trust yourself, trust yourself. We hear those words constantly. And yet God is saying, trust me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. The world tells us to lean on our own understanding. But God says, don't lean on your own understanding. Trust in him and lean on his understanding. Recently, I've been going to physio um, for my neck. I, I was in a car accident about a year and a half ago. And I guess I got a bit of a neck injury, but I was really busy a year and a half ago. And there just seemed to be a lot going on. Mason had just was just having his surgery and Mia had just had surgeries. And we just, you know, we were just in and out of the hospital for so many other things. And I just sort of didn't even think about this neck injury. And then all of a sudden it came um, it came to me again in the fall and I could feel swelling in my neck even. And I just thought, what is this? And so I, I went, um, for physiotherapy and they said to me, were you in a car accident? And I said, yes, I was a year and a half ago. And they told me how, um, you know, like this is probably, uh, related to this, this car accident. And so I've been doing this physiotherapy and the, the first time I went, she would hold my head and she would say, just rest your head in my hand and let me move your neck. And I, it was so difficult to do that. I did not want to. And I just said to her, I just don't even know how to let you move my head. I want to move my head. I don't want to trust her to move my head. And she said, everyone says this. Everyone says it, that they have such a hard time letting someone else um, move them and trusting completely putting your your you know head and uh, your muscles and your movements in the hands of somebody else it was really difficult the second time it was still difficult it was a little bit easier but a little bit diff but still a bit difficult and the last time i was there just this past week i was thinking oh i've gotten so much better at that at letting her take my head and to move it in the places she wants it to go and even to rest my my arms and my shoulders so that she can move them how she wants them to be and as i was lying there on the table i thought this is so much like our faith it's so much like trusting in God that we're told to trust in God, but every fiber of our being wants to hold on to our own um, power and our own control. We want to control it ourselves, everything in our life, ourselves. But God says, trust me. And the only way we can learn to trust him is by continually practicing. So for me, it was uh, you know, for my neck injury, it was going to physio all of the time and learning to trust the physiotherapist that she's going to move me and she's going to, um, she's going to work on healing me and I need to trust her. And it's the same with God that we need to come back to him continually. We need to learn to trust him more. And we can only do that when we are continually in relationship with him. And then it gets easier and it gets easier to let him direct our paths. 
one of the things that we've started this year is our Bible reading project. And it's been so good. We're just on day three and I have been so blessed already. And uh, if you signed up to do it, I hope that you are doing it. There is the online group that you can be part of, or you can just be doing it on your own, but it'd be great if you're checking in so that we knew who was a part of this, because the goal of this daily Bible reading challenge where we read through the whole Bible in the year is so that we are continually coming back to God. Every day we're coming back to him. We are trusting him. We are learning to depend on him because when we depend on him, when we trust in him, he directs our paths and he directs our paths in good ways. Just like the physiotherapist knows how to heal my neck knows how to make me feel better. God knows how to lead us, how to make us feel better, how to heal us, how to um, be at work in us in a way that where he can do amazing things through us. So I hope today um, in looking back and looking forward that trusting God can be a big part of um, your growth this year. It's, I hope it's a part of my growth. We're never done trusting God. We're never done growing in our faith. And so, um, you know, that each day we will learn to trust God more. We will give in to him holding us and guiding us and leading us more completely. We will allow him to move us and grow us in the direction that he wants us to to grow. So I invite you to be a part of that, that Bible project, but I invite you in whatever areas of your life where you know you're holding out, you're holding on to control yourself, that today is a day where you start to give control back to God. You start to trust him with all your heart. We're going to look at a video now that actually comes from the first devotional from that Bible project um, series that we're doing this uh, walking through the Bible in the in the whole year. And uh, this I just thought this was a, a great um, video that really describes the story of what's going on, you know, from creation through the gospel and the imagery of trees as we see them in the Bible. And so um, I want you to watch this video and in a way, I um, let it be preparation for you for uh, when we celebrate communion later on in the service as well. The story of the Bible begins in a garden where God and humans live together. And the biblical authors want us to see this garden as a type of temple. The top is the most sacred place, the Holy of Holies, where God's presence is most intense. And that's where we find the tree of life. So what's this tree all about? Well, it represents God's own life and creative power that is made available to others. In fact, God's first command is that humans eat from all of the trees, including this one. So you're ingesting God's own life. That sounds intense. Yeah, this meal transforms the one who eats it, or in the words of the story, it leads to eternal life. Okay, but on the way to the tree of life, the humans have to pass by another tree called the tree of knowing good and bad. And God says that eating from this tree will kill you. How does it do that? Well, it represents taking the authority to do what is good in your own eyes. And when humans do that, it leads to broken relationships, violence, and death. And so here's the thing. Both trees look beautiful, but one of them is a false tree of life. And the humans take from this false tree of life. And they're exiled from the garden for good. Which raises the question, can anyone ever get back to the tree of life? Well, later on in the story, we meet a man named Moses, and he encounters God in a desert tree on top of a mountain. Oh, you mean the burning bush, where Moses is told that he's standing on holy ground. Yeah, it's a plant on a mountain radiating with God's life and power, just like the tree of life. And God tells Moses, bring your people up to this mountain so we can form a partnership. And this partnership will force them to make a choice. Will they follow gods of their own making or receive life from the true God? And in this story, they give their allegiance to an idol. And it's just the first of many. The story goes on to show generation after generation choosing gods of their own making. And these idols were usually placed on tall hills like beautiful trees. 
but they're false trees of life that lead the people into self-destruction, exile, and death. It's like death's grip on us is too strong to resist. Is there any hope? Well, let's turn now to the story of Jesus. He came to announce that God's eternal life was available once again through him. So Jesus thinks of himself as the tree of life. Yes, this is what he meant when he claimed to be the vine that brings God's life into the world. And Jesus invited people to eat from him. Yeah, he was inviting people to trust him and be transformed by his life. But Jesus also exposed how corrupt humans are, how much they love false trees of life. And so Jesus presented people with a new choice between life or death. And this time, they don't just choose death. They also chose to attack the one who sustains all of life. Yes, Jesus is led up to the top of a hill where he dies upon a tree. The cross is the sad and violent result of humanity's desire to do what is good in our own eyes. The tree of life has been overcome by the power of death. Well, it seemed that way. But Jesus said that he was a seed of God's life that would die in the ground, but then grow into a plant that would bear much fruit. So to defeat death, Jesus went through it. And now this new tree of life stands before us all. We can eat from it, but it will mean passing through death like Jesus, allowing our old way of being human to die. So that a new humanity can grow in its place. Yes, Jesus said he is the vine and we are his branches. So not only do you eat from this tree, you're invited to become a part of it, helping produce its fruit so that his life and love can spread through us to others. And so the story of the Bible ends in a new garden which is also a kind of temple, with the tree of life at its center, providing healing and life forever to all who choose to eat from it. Whoa, what a wonderful video. Now just some quick updates on what's going on this week at Newgate. But first of all, Happy New Year. Very exciting new year. Let's just hope it's a fantastic year. Now for some uh, quick announcements. Today we're having a communion service. Exciting. Also, no Sunday school after church today. Instead, we got our uh, fellowship meeting. We did one last week. It was phenomenal. Great to see a lot of people. Just It's good to talk to them, so make sure you check that out. You've got a link for it sent to your email, so right after church, hop on that. Also, starting next week, we have have no Bible study this week, but next week all our normal Bible studies are going to get back going, so uh, check your emails for that, and uh, thank you. We invite you to stand again and worship with us. We're singing the song Refiner's Fire, which is just a a song, the words come straight from the Psalms, and it's a prayer of asking God to help to make us into the kind of people that he wants us to be. And uh, so I pray for you today, and I hope that as you sing this song, it can be the desire of your heart to be who Jesus wants you to be.
when I stand accused from my regrets and the devil roars his empty threats I will preach the gospel to myself that I am not a man condemned for Jesus Christ is my defense my sin is nailed to the cross my soul is healed by the scars the weight of guilt I bear no more praise the Lord oh praise the Lord when doubt and shame hang over me like the arrows from the enemy I will run again to Calvary that rugged hill of hell's defeat that fortress and my victory my sin is nailed to the cross my soul is healed by the scars now I'm alive forevermore praise the Lord oh praise When I stand before the throne at last, His blood will plead my innocence. I will worship Him with holy hands and raise a song that never ends of Jesus Christ, my righteousness. My sin is nailed to the cross. My soul is healed by the scars. The weight of guilt I bear no more. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Thanks for that. We want to look now into the New Testament at the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. This also was has been one of my favorite verses throughout my walk with God. I discovered this verse when I was 15, when I was reading the Bible. And it's always been underlined in my Bible. And it's always been one that I come back to again and again and again. Because it just reminds me so much of life and living this life. And yet the victory we have in Jesus and the goodness of God. So I'm going to read it for you. It says... Um, Actually, I'm going to go back to verse 7 uh, and start there. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. This verse, I think, is very um, fitting for the new year and this past crazy year that we've had um, where I think a lot of people have felt perplexed. What's going on? Why is, why is this happening? Um, what is happening? Um, there has been, you know, people that have been, uh, lonely and feeling left, left behind, um, people worried about, um, you know, the future and what is the future? What does the future hold? And I think as Christians, it's really important that we remember that there is nothing about our faith that, um, makes us immune from bad things happening. Bad things will happen to us just like bad things happen to anyone else. In fact, when Paul is writing these words, he's writing to Christians who are being persecuted beyond anything that, that we've experienced this year. 
They were being, you know, their lives were at stake every day. In fact, the whole Bible is written to people who are being persecuted. That's the whole nature of the Bible. So many of the of the stories of the Bible and the messages of the Bible were written to people who were, um, you know, far away from the perfect life. And they just had hope of the perfect life. And so Paul is encouraging the Christians here. And I think the same encouragement is for us today, that we are often troubled, but not crushed, sometimes in doubt, but never in despair. There are many enemies, but we are never without a friend. And though badly hurt at times, we are not destroyed. This verse says to me that even though bad things happen, and even though bad things will continue to happen, God always has the victory. He has won the battle already. So we do not need to be in despair. We do not need to feel alone. We do not need to feel rejected or um, in any way, um, you know, far from God because he's there with us. One of the the great things that came out of this year for me is the opportunity to work at Father Lacombe Care Center. So just at the end of the year, they um, had a, there was a pastoral care need there. And uh, they, there was, I got offered to just come a, on a part-time basis and just come and to work with the residents, giving them pastoral care. And I just started doing that at the end of November. And um and I'll just continue to do it for another little while until things are sort of back to normal. And it has been such a great blessing for me to be able to minister to the, to the residents at Father Lacombe Care Center. Uh, some of them haven't been able to see family members since this whole thing started. Some people have no family to come and visit them at all. And a lot of people are, you know, struggling with health concerns and they're all struggling with, you know, age concerns and, uh, and just the, the loneliness and separation that that brings. And I, I pray many, many residents want to be prayed for. They want me to pray with them. And I find myself saying the same prayer again and again, when I am uh, praying for the people, I say, Lord, we pray for your sustaining power to be with this person. And I, th- those words, your sustaining power, your sustaining strength, Lord, that you will sustain them. And I think about that so often. So every day I pray that prayer for people multiple times over and over. And yet it is the prayer that I I think we need each of us to pray. I need to pray this prayer. You need to pray this prayer. We all need the sustaining power of Jesus Christ, the sustaining power of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives, keeping us going, helping us to endure, helping us not just to exist, but to be a blessing to the people around us, to the, be the light shining in the darkness in our world, to be the hope of Jesus Christ to the people that we know. The sustaining power of Jesus Christ is what that verse is talking about, that we might get low, we might feel friendless, we might start to be anxious about, these, about things in life but we never give up hope because we have the sustaining power of Jesus Christ. And so today, that's my challenge to you, is that you walk in the sustaining power of Jesus Christ, that you pray for it daily, that you realize it in your own life, that the Holy Spirit's strength is there to sustain you, to keep you going throughout this year and throughout your life as you live for Jesus. Just picking up on that, um, you know, the the whole idea of, of being able to keep our eyes on on the hope that that is in front of us. Um, our, our daughter Maggie became the third of our children to get her license. And, and of course, the the week that she was supposed to have her license, the you know, the, the roads were dry. But by the time the uh, the actual test came, we had had a snowstorm and there was lots of snow. And and I remember just giving her the advice that, um, you know, that, that even even when you're driving, if, if it gets slippery, you know, I'm sure you've all heard this advice before that you need to make sure that you keep looking at where you want to go, not, not where you're going, right? Like that, that if you start to slide or things start to go a little bit out of control, you, you pick that point that you want to get to and you focus on that. And, um, you know, I think that's good advice, not just for driving, but for living. And, and as pastor Julie was saying, you know, we, we've come through a very difficult 
2020. And, and you know what? We don't know what 2021 has in store for us, whether it's more of the same. We're hoping for better, right? That's what we're all hoping for. Um, but that sustaining power that Paul writes about, you know, John writes about that too in, in the book of Revelation. Uh, in fact, in the very last chapters, you know, we, we see um, John sort of talking about, you know, what heaven's going to be like. And in chapter 21, verses 1 through 6, um, there's this beautiful image. And that's what I want us to, to focus on as we try and understand um, where do we look to? What's our point on the horizon that we, that we fix ourselves on? And, and it's this. It says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down for, out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated at the right hand uh, or on the throne said, I am making everything new. And then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the Thursday, I will give water without cost from the spring of water of life. You know, I think that that's the thing that we have to keep our minds on, right? That, that no matter what difficulties we go through, that, that we keep our eyes on the finish, that, that we will go through hard times, right? If, if, we, if we manage to get through 2020 without any hard times, that's fantastic. But just know that, that there will be hard times, but we also have a hope that we can hold on to. And so those words that, that we read at the very end of the Bible are, are words that we can trust in, right? It says it even there, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. God is there for us. And there will come a time where there will be no more tears, no more crying, no more pain. Until then, you know, we, we struggle through some difficult times, but we struggle through it together because we are with God. We are God's people. And he will be there for us. And I think at the end of the day, that's the, that's the sustaining power that, that we've been talking about, even in these reflections. And so we're going to close um, our service with, with a communion and some music. And so right now, if, if you um, haven't had a chance to prepare it yet, I would encourage you that while, while the uh, music team is singing, that, that you gather you know, something to drink, some bread, whatever, so that you're able to join us um, to celebrate communion. That time when we celebrate what Jesus Christ has done for us, the fact that what he did on the cross is what secures us that place in the new heaven. And so as we do that, you know, let's just lift up the words as if they're our prayer. Amen. Let's sing, Lead Me to the Cross.
as we prepare our hearts for communion, uh, we want to remember you know, back to the video that we watched that introduced the, the Bible reading uh, plan for this year. And I thought that it really fit well with the theme of communion. You know, we, we watched how um, the very first commandment that God gives to us is that we are to eat, eat of the tree of life. And then we followed that imagery of the tree throughout scripture. And, and we see that Jesus himself calls himself um, the vine, the tree of life. And, and that, that the ingesting of that tree of life, it, it changes the people, it, it, it transforms them. And as we prepare ourselves for, um, for communion, it reminds us that, that this is an act that doesn't just transform us, but as Jesus, the vine, the tree of life, as he says himself, that we are able to be grafted in to this tree. And so that, that we don't just get transformed, we don't just get changed, we actually become part of, of the tree of life. And I, I just think that's a beautiful image as we, as we prepare for communion. And so I want to read from, um, from the, the letter to the Corinthians, the first letter, and it says this. <clears throat> For I have received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. <clears throat> You know, as we, as we prepare our hearts, as we enter into a time of prayer, it's also a time of self-reflection. And I want to encourage you to take some time to just think about what it means to be grafted into the tree of life. That as we celebrate this transformation, as we celebrate this communion, um, that we want to make sure that, that we are um, just doing it out of a state of, of uh, intentionality that we're not just doing it because it's the first Sunday of the month, but we're doing it because of the amazing change that it creates in us. And so let's just pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time where we're able to um, think about all that you've done for us. Lord, that, that you, you were planted in the garden as the tree of life and, and that you died on a tree to give us life. And Lord, we just thank you that um, because of that, we are able to not only be forgiven, not only be redeemed, but to be grafted into the vine. And Lord, we pray that, that as we do that, <clears throat> that there would be nothing that would get in our way as we celebrate this communion, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus, when he met with the disciples in the upper room on the night that he was betrayed, the Gospels tell us that he took bread and he broke it. And he said to them, this is my body and it's given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he passed it to them to eat. They didn't understand fully what they were doing. And they really probably didn't understand much at all. But we have the benefit of knowing that we're participating in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ so that we are part of his story. Eat this in remembrance of him. And we read that likewise after the meal, Jesus took the cup and he said, this is my blood, which is shed for you. And again, this is something that the people didn't understand. They didn't know. They, they weren't sure what he was meaning. It was a different tradition that they were celebrating. And, and yet Jesus took that tradition and changed it. And he said, this blood is given for you. It's shed for you freely. Because without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. And so he says that, that we are to drink this in remembrance of what he's done. In closing, he says that whenever we eat this bread or drink this, this cup, that we are proclaiming what Christ has done and what Christ will do. And so let's just close with prayer. Lord, we thank you so much that you invite us to participate in your story. Lord, as we um, 
move from an old year to a new year. It's a time of looking back and looking forward. And so, God, we pray today that we look forward to what it means to be part of your story, what it means to be used by you to change the world, what it means by to be the light and the salt in this world, to be the bringers of hope. Lord, we just pray that today, as we celebrate communion, as we remember everything you accomplished for us on the cross, that we will actively choose to participate, that our faith won't be something that is um, done out of duty or responsibility. It won't be something that we um, do because it's just the thing we do every first Sunday of the month. Lord, that we will truly participate in your story. Help us with that as we live our lives this week and this year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. Please stick around for our fellowship Zoom time uh, right after the service. We look forward to being able to visit with lots of you. Ever be on